So hello, welcome back to the channel. And as the title of this video would suggest, today is a incredibly special day. But before we go on inside and check out the car, uh, I wanna share with you a, a story which is very important to me and very close to my heart. So it was the year 2000. I was bored at home one weekend. I was 14 years old and my dad decided to help pass the time by taking me down to the local car dealerships to check out the cars. Now at that time, it was a setup where Aston Martin was opposite Ferrari, who was opposite Bentley, who was opposite Porsche. And you would approach most of these showrooms and they were generally a little bit stuffy about it. And actually going into a supercar showroom back then, certainly at that age, was actually a little bit scary. And that it wasn't until I walked over to Porsche and I spotted a 996 turbo in the window and i had the same mindset i was like there's no way i'm going to get access to that car lo and behold open the door walk straight in and not only was the car open but the salesman at that time was incredibly forthcoming and encouraging to let me sit in this car so there i was 14 years old finding myself at the wheel of a year 2000 996 turbo now during that time while i was immersing myself in how incredible this experience was i could hear the salesman talking to my dad and he was saying yeah actually porsche encourage us to let younger generations into our cars and experience our cars because you never really know who you might be inspiring well i left that day with that memory of how cool is that brand how cool is that car and on the way out the uh, salesman handed me a brochure of the 996 Turbo. This is that very brochure. I've had this every house I've been in, every office I've had. I even took it to university with me. It sat on my shelf. 20 years later and all of those years, I swore to myself that one day, I didn't know when, I didn't know how, but I was gonna end up with a 911 Turbo S. And today, thanks to Porsche Perth, we're here to collect that very car. Check it out. Okay, so here we are. I uh, can't quite believe these words are coming out of my mouth, but here is my new Gentian Blue 911 Turbo S, no less. Despite the fact that the opening story of this was that I've theoretically been waiting for this day for around about 20 years, uh, I truly honestly believed that one day I would be the owner of a Turbo S. I just didn't know when or, or how. But the actual journey time of this car has been around about nine months. I ordered it when I came up to Porsche Perth towards the end of last year, and then the spec process began after that. Uh, the original spec actually was going to be GT Silver with a red leather interior, which you might actually identify as being the uh, launch spec. But thanks to Ali, so Ali who works here has been fantastic throughout this whole process. Uh, during lockdown, we ultimately ended up specking this car via WhatsApp, uh, because obviously showrooms were closed, but Ali and I bouncing ideas around and we ended up with gentian blue with an interior which I honestly never thought I would ever spec. I shall share that with you shortly uh, but ultimately it is a sort of deep uh, navy hide which is called graphite blue. More on that shortly because there is a contrast stitch which matches with the GT3 over there. So we'll do a walk and talk of the exterior spec and then we'll go on the interior. Gentian blue, the colour is stunning. Conveniently we're up here in Scotland and the sun is out but at the beginning of the video, you saw it inside. It has so many different hues. You can see it here on these high spots, the really light shades of blue. And then these more flatter panels here, it's more of a deeper navy. And I think it really helps highlight the sculpture of the car. One thing that I'm finding on camera that isn't doing this car justice is just how much sculpture it's got. The flares of the arches, they are so deep. So 992, when it launched, was already a pretty wide body, but Porsche elevating things as always on the turbo variants. Uh, this car has got even wider. Uh, as part of that, uh, these side sills as well. So these side sills are, are actually uh, bespoke to the turbo platform. These have just been brought out to be more in keeping with the extended arches on the Turbo S. 
Then wheels. Uh, these are actually what I guess you would class these as, as the more standard wheels, uh, although they are diamond cut. Silver face, black interior here, and this is an opportune moment to talk about the brakes. Now, I had the honor of being able to drive a Porsche UK's 911 Turbo S press car uh, just a few weeks back. Uh, these are now running uh, some of the largest production carbon ceramic brakes on any road car. Uh, in fact, if we go up to the front, these are, wait for it, 10 piston carbon ceramic brakes. Um, having experienced it on the press car, the only way of describing how this thing sheds speed is as if someone has sort of thrown an anchor out into the tarmac behind you and it's just sort of dragging you to a halt. The braking performance is outstanding. It's also, I think with the contrasting yellow against the gentian blue, it's such a nice pop. But look at the size of that disc, ridiculous stuff. Iconic uh, center locking wheels. Uh, then let's go around to my favorite part of the car, which has to be the rear. What they've done on the rear of this car, it's so imposing, it's absolutely huge. So what we spec here is effectively a, a darker light surround and insert. This is an optional extra from Porsche. So if you could imagine that uh, this would normally be red, it's now sort of smoked and uh, uh, transparent and highlighted in black, which I also think complements the Porsche logo here quite well, having all of the uh, fonts popping off it. Um, some people like to debadge their Turbo S, and if it was my second or third Turbo S, I probably would too, but this is my first ever Turbo S, and I'm very proud to wear that badge, so that's, that's cool. And uh, also managed to get my hand on a uh, Mr. 11 JWW plate. Slightly contentious, but it's 11 for 911. Right, uh, sports exhaust system. If you were following my channel when this car launched, I was a little bit critical because I thought that these exhaust tips uh, should have been the square tips, which were iconic from the Porsche Turbo. Uh, as it happens, the sports exhaust tips are the oval ones like this. Now, some might see it as a tip of the hat towards the GT2 RS, which has similar exhaust surrounds to this. Others might see it as looking a little bit similar to the standard Carrera. So it depends on where you sit. Having said that, uh, the difference in sound of this is huge, particularly compared with the uh, 991 generation turbo. Exhaust tone on this for a heavily turbocharged car, which also has the um, WLTP fuel particulate filter up it, still sounds really cool. And then slightly further up, um, I love this feature. So what we've got here is the uh, hydraulically extending rear wing. But what I love about it is while it's extended now, when it drops back down, it sits on top of this sort of mini ducktail here. And I think that is such a nice tip of the hat to historic Porsche styling. It's this sort of ducktail plinth, which the uh, extended wing sits on. And also when it goes down here, it, it doesn't just meet with it, this wing still spills over its width. So it really does sit as its own little ducktail, which is cool. Uh, subtle custom feature, which you probably can't pick up on camera straight away. Uh, these cooling vanes here, the top of these have actually been painted in gentian blue as well to match the body. So that's cool. Um, back to the side profile of the car. I actually opted for completely clear glass rather than having privacy glass in the back. Um, mostly from an aesthetic point of view, when you stand back from it, it just keeps the sort of transparency of the glass consistent around the car. So it doesn't feel lopsided having just that bit black. I always think that, that can look a bit odd. And then let's go around to the front before showing you the interior spec. So front really, and I guess this is quite a signature thing for Porsche is, uh, I guess it's the calmer end of the car. It's not overly aggressive. Uh, we've uh, specced the LED matrix headlights, but they're the ones that sort of turn with the steering wheel. I haven't tried these in the dark yet. Uh, from what I've read, they illuminate the road in front of you like a football pitch. That'll be cool. And then what is uh, exclusive to turbo models is the uh, dual strip daytime running lights. Hard to, to see right now, but rather than just having one running light on the top here, you actually have two. Uh, which conveniently brings us down to the air and radiator intakes. Now these actually articulate themselves depending on if the car needs to be more aerodynamically efficient or if it requires more cooling. These veins open and close depending on what you're doing. And speaking of uh, actuating components, you might also notice that this splitter is down too. Now this splitter isn't always down. It looks 
better down um, but this as well also um, actuates depending on the mode you're driving and how you're driving and uh, then probably the least subtle component on the front of this car which would be the camera which is used for uh, things like cruise control and maintaining distance from cars in front of you so that's a brief overview of the exterior i'm really happy with it in gentian blue i've only ever seen a standard 992 in gentian so i was quite confident that it would work what i wasn't sure about was the interior which I'll just show you right now. All right, so here's the interior. This is actually the bit which I really wasn't sure about. When you spec it from a render, obviously, as I mentioned, there was no opportunity to get into a showroom to feel and see a physical sample of this leather, but it's a sort of deep navy heading towards gray hue. But as it pops off gentian blue, it works amazingly well. This is the first time I've seen it. This is the first day I've seen it. Uh, this video is actually going out a couple of hours after I've seen this. Uh, so you're seeing it almost as fresh as I am. Uh, this quilting here, uh, this is an exclusive option to uh, Turbo and Turbo S. Uh, this is a design which is a tip of the hat to, I think it was the 964, um, but it's really nice. It just adds a little bit more detail uh, to inside the cockpit. Now the eagle-eyed audiophiles of you may have identified the Burmester sound system. This is an optional upgrade from Porsche. They work with both Bose and Burmester. Uh, this is actually a 855 watt 13 speaker system and despite the fact that there's actually 13 speakers in here somewhere I can only identify about six of them. They are very well integrated into the doors here and here and there's also two in the back which I can easily see. Um, big music fan. I'll be putting some uh, decent mileage on this car and also listening to podcasts, etc. Yeah, so I thought it was worthwhile upgrading to the quality sound system. And then arguably one of the features which is most important for me is the addition of back seats. Never had back seats in a sports car before. It's never been important until my baby boy came along. So, so this logo here, the Isofix logo, delightful to see for a petrol head with a family. This means I can take out my wife and my boy together in a properly fast supercar and we can all go out for the same adventure together. I've been longing for that experience and quite honestly, that's one of the biggest reasons why I ended up going for the Turbo S was because all three of us can go out at the same time and experience the performance of this car. Now back to the details, uh, this stitch here, and it might be coming across as white on camera, but it is actually crayon. Now crayon is the color of my GT3, which is conveniently parked over there. So I thought it would just be a nice tip of the hat and a nice tie-in to match the stitching with the other Porsche in the garage. And then over to the steering wheel. So in the middle, this is clad with graphite blue leather. The wheel itself is clad in Alcantara. And then quickly down to the controls on the wheel. This really is the button I'm the most interested in with regards to driving. This is the uh, drive select or drive mode switch. So as you rotate this, you can see that up here on the dash, the uh, drive mode changes with that. Now, interestingly, wet mode uh, is sometimes can be activated automatically. Amazingly, within the wheel arches of the 992 Turbo, there are acoustic sensors which read the level of water on the road which you're driving on. Uh, so what might happen as you're driving along, it'll start raining, it might detect audibly that there is excess water and then put the car into wet mode automatically. And that does things like uh, en enhance traction control, reduce throttle response, and generally set the car up to be a bit softer and safer for if it detects if you're driving in excessive wet conditions. And then while you can do the drive select switch on this convenient wheel here, you can also use it via the touch control panel on the multimedia system right now. So we've got normal sport, sport plus and individual. Individual is great because you can configure a setting that you want to drive the car in. So for example, you might want a softer suspension but sharper throttle response with the exhaust in sports mode. Uh, probably that's exactly the kind of mode which I will be driving the car in most of the time. And then we've got all these pre-configured settings here. Normal, when we go for the uh, first drive, I will share with you the damping calibration on this car. It is phenomenal. Uh, so normal is basically your sort of general comfort daily driver mode. 
Sport and then Sport Plus, and that's basically the most extreme setting of the car. Suspension gets stiffer, throttle response sharpens, exhaust gets even more throaty, uh, and that's when the S in Turbo S really comes alive. And then we also have the option here to uh, independently toggle on and off the exhaust system and retract or deploy both rear spoiler and front splitter. So yeah, all cool stuff. And so there we have it. Now this is gonna be a fairly long-term car. Uh, it'll be on the channel for a long, long time. I've got lots of adventures planned with it. Now at this point, I'd love to hear from you. What do you wanna see with the 911 Turbo S? From what I can understand, uh, this is one of, if not the first, 911 Turbo S to uh, hit the road in the UK, to be registered as a car hitting the road. So we're incredibly early, we're incredibly lucky. And for me to sit here with my buck from 20 years ago, when I was an uh, up and coming 14 year old petrol head, uh, it really is the stuff of dreams. So from 996, waited a very long time to ultimately end up in a 992 Turbo S. And I, I just can't believe it. I can't believe I'm sat here in my own Turbo S. It's ridiculous. A uh, massive thank you to Porsche Perth for finding me this slot. Uh, thank you to Ali at Porsche Perth for uh, helping me with the spec session during this troubling time. And it's honestly been amazing to be able to spec the car to my very own configuration. Uh, it's such an honor to be able to do that on a car like this. So yes, lots of plans with it, road trips, track days, everything in between. Uh, but ultimately this car is here to be shared with you. So let me know in the comments below. Also any questions you have, this is day one, lots more to come soon, which of course importantly means the first drive video will be landing on this channel in the near future. So be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so you get the notification when new content goes live. As always, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao. Yeah.